I want to give you a couple of different perspectives here because we've talked about what MPs are saying, but this all stems from a vote of the British people, a referendum on whether the UK should leave the European Union. Uh, I'm joined now and want to welcome uh, Lara Spirit, who's co-founder of Our Future, Our Choice. Lara, welcome to BBC World News. And Tom Harwood, who's a, a reporter for Guido Fawkes. And Tom, I think it's fair to say that you are a Leave supporter and Lara, you are a Remain uh, supporter. Uh, Tom, first, uh, we've had a resignation of the Brexit Secretary, Dominic Raab. There could be other resignations. Is it fair to say there's a lot of concern or anger here at Westminster? Oh, absolutely. I think the resignation of Dominic Raab just exposes how little control Brexiteers actually have over the process of Brexit. Since at least the summer of 2017, it has been in the hands, the entire process has been in the hands of people who voted Remain and don't like the idea of Brexit, treating it as a, um, a, as a problem to be mitigated, not an opportunity to be seized. And that is, has been the fundamental problem for over the last year. And really, if we want to get a proper Brexit, if we want to deliver the will of the people, there's no way it can be delivered by this Prime Minister. Lara, how do you feel about where we're at? I mean, from your point of view, it is a problem, isn't it? Yeah, and I think Tom and I actually have much in common in this respect. Even though we have different views on Brexit, we both agree that this deal is an absolute disaster for this country. I personally think that this deal is going to leave us poorer and less secure. It's going to leave us a rule taker following EU regulations and rules without a say in them paying a £50 billion divorce bill. But I think the resignation of Dominic Raab this morning shows that this is not a problem about people. This is a problem with Brexit in itself. And I think that the, the British public are not buying this. The only way out of this mess, now that we know that it's almost going to be impossible for Theresa May to sell this deal to Parliament, is to give the say, give the decision back to the people and give them a say on whether or not this deal is good enough for their future. So, Lara, from your point of view, you want there to be another referendum? I do, yeah. I think that it is completely democratic and legitimate to give the people a final say on whether or not this deal is good enough for their future. We've had two years of absolutely hopeless negotiations. Just one in six people think that this deal is going to be good enough. And I think that we've now seen, despite the public being utterly exhausted with this process that they now know that the government is not capable of coming to agreement um, even amongst themselves let alone passing this through parliament i think the only solution left is to give this decision back to the people this is extraordinary we all agree that this deal is absolutely rubbish because it hands too much power to brussels the answer to that is not then to hand more power to brussels the answer is to take back control and you do that by leaving the single market by leaving the customs union by ending ecj jurisdiction within the uk this deal doesn't completely deliver any of those three key planks that Theresa May set out in her Lancaster House speech. Oh, and what about Lara's point that given that it's been such a mess, which I think everybody agrees on, why not ask the people again? Now you're seeing what a future outside the EU might look like. Is that what you want? This isn't the future outside the EU. This is a future tethered to the EU. The people in 2016 voted to leave the EU, and we can't start to revisit that decision before it's even been delivered. I mean, we, we haven't seen what a true Brexit would look like because we haven't had someone in charge who is willing to deliver that. I think this could all change in the coming, the coming weeks. It seems to me, well, it's obvious, actually, that you are both deeply unhappy with the halfway house. But Theresa May, as British Prime Minister, has said she's trying to deliver for the nation, and so she's trying to find a halfway house. But that doesn't work, does it, for you? Well, of course it doesn't work, and I think we've seen that. So few people actually think that this is, this is the right Brexit that they want. Tom and I are both united on this, that we think that this is a terrible deal for the country. But unfortunately, they've had two years to get this right. They haven't been able to find somebody who is going to deliver a Brexit that works for the people. And in this situation, we've now got no time left. We haven't got time left to play around with different ideas and different fantasies of what we think a good Brexit would look like. There isn't time. The only thing left to do is to let the people decide whether or not this is going to be good enough for their future and whether or not this is the right thing to do. There's plenty of time. There's five months left before we automatically leave in, uh, on the 29th of March 2019. If we automatically leave on the 29th of March 2019, we go to World Trade Organization terms, we can put in place many mitigating measures that can ease that transition to World Trade terms. But really, a mutually beneficial deal is good for the UK and it's good for the EU, and level heads will prevail if we just stick to our guns. This government has not been strong enough, not realised the strength of its position as the fifth largest economy in the world, as the largest trading partner for the EU. They need us as, just as much as we need them, and we should not be afraid to really hold their toes to the fire and say that we are willing to leave with no deal. Currently, the Prime Minister has not been credible in her, in, in, in her threats to leave with no deal. The EU just don't believe her. We need someone who is, who is believable in their, in their uh, decision to 
uh, in their idea that no deal is OK. But at that point, I have to put it to you that there's division all over the British kind of political scene. You say that Theresa May is an incredible leader. Do either of you have a, a candidate, Jeremy Corbyn, or somebody else who would be a credible national leader? This Any your point? This is the point, is that there just isn't one. There is not now a political figure who is going to be capable of uniting the country around a certain form of Brexit, because the problem is Brexit What's itself. It's a council of despair. Well, or we give it back to the people. We finally let them have this say, say if it's good enough for their future, and we can finally put it to rest and move forward with the other pressing issues which are facing our country. So, Tom, if no vote, who could be a credible national leader? There are so many choices. There is a, a wealth of talent within the cabinet and, and within ministerial ranks of, of the Conservative Party right now. I don't think that either of us would be happy if Jeremy Corbyn became Prime Minister. He's more of a Brexiteer than Theresa May, at least, but he's got some pretty fruity ideas about what to do with the economy outside of Europe. So, can really. I, can I put something else to you? Because we've just got another minute or so, which is you're both very passionate, you're, both, you're very articulate and engaged in politics. Do you think that this whole mess helps to bring young people into politics thinking the older generations haven't done it for us. They're just not stepping up to the challenge. Well, it's certainly done that for us, our organisation, our future, our choice. Even this morning has seen a spike in the engagement with our campaign. I've never seen young people so engaged in an issue before. They were among the 700,000 who marched on the streets recently to call for a people's vote. So they're incredibly angry. They're so angry at the withdrawal um, text which has just come out, which has absolutely scarce reference to things that young people care about, like educational rights. Uh, they're really angry. They opposed this in 2016. They oppose this by an even greater margin now. And the one million people who have come of voting age since the referendum didn't deserve their say on this deal. I think whenever there's exciting things going on in politics, you see more engagement, and that can only be a good thing. You had, during the Blair years, uh, over a decade of sort of um, grey managerial politics, and I think it's finally a good, uh, it's a good thing that we finally have proper debates about the substance of our policy and ideological bent in this country. That can only be a good thing, and more people getting involved is absolutely a good thing. And yet, here we are talking about the very future of the United Kingdom, the biggest issue you could possibly have. And both of you are saying, we don't have any faith in the building behind us in Parliament, it seems. Yeah, I definitely would say that. I think a lot of people have lost faith uh, in Parliament to make these decisions, and that is precisely why they are now not going to be capable of making the biggest decision of, that this country currently faces and will do for generations to come. It is absolutely right when Parliament is completely gridlocked on this issue. There is absolutely no way through, and all journalists are now saying this, they don't see a way that this bill is going to be able to pass through Parliament. The resignation of the Brexit Secretary this morning, I think, confirms the divisions that we're facing. And when you have a situation like that, I think it's completely fair enough to ask the people whether or not they can resolve this issue for us. And just a final thought, Tom. That sounds like you're calling for a general election. The problem with this process is that from the beginning, Parliament has not accepted the result. That's why they installed a Remainer as Prime Minister. That's why they've seeked um, to water down the deal at every turn over the last two and a half years. Really, the people in the building behind us have been frustrating the decision from the start. Start. And we need to prove to them, we need people in charge who can say that this is not an impossible task, the UK is not an impotent country, we can deliver this. Well, Tom Harwood and Lara Spirit, thank you both very much. I'm really grateful for you to come and talk to our audience uh, here on BBC World News about the situation we're in. And